Merkel Media. He put it in park, threw open the driver's door, ran out the side of the car, across the front of it, and jumped right off the side of the bridge in front of me. The only people who really pulled over were truckers. He said, we're going to Hodge, and he didn't slow down. He went across the median onto the oncoming traffic, but where they could see him coming, they just got out of the way. I noticed this plane was really low. He went right in front of us, hit the fence, and it spun around. You know, 30 seconds more, he could have hit us. And I went around that truck and a guy stepped out from behind the truck and threw a piece of wood and shot through my window just like a spear and stuck in the back of the cab of my truck. That's probably one of the stranger things I've seen. Welcome to Hammer Lane Legends. I am Brian Merkel. And I'm Brian Shipper. If you have a crazy and wild story you would like to share with us from the road, go ahead and get a hold of us. Uh... At uh, HLL Podcast at ProtonMail.com. That's HLL Podcast at ProtonMail.com. Uh, leave us a, you know, send us a, an email or go to the Hammerlane Legends webpage. You can hit the contact section. You can get a hold of us that way. Either way works for us. Just get a hold of us. We'd love to talk to you, have a conversation with you about your experiences on the road. That's the whole point of the show is to, is to get. The, the driver's experiences out there and shine a light on not the industry itself, but on the drivers in the industry, because basically they are the industry without the drivers. There is no industry. Um, Ship, tell them about the voicemail line. Voicemail line, 515-585-MERK. That's 515-585-6375. A short story, five, 10 minutes of something that you might've seen. Something happened on the road. Anything like that. 10 minutes at the longest, that would be about it. You have more than that, get a hold of Jack. Uh, we'll schedule to be on the show. We could do an interview for you. Exactly. That would be awesome. You know, just get, you know, maybe that will, that will uh, inspire somebody while they're telling their story on the voicemail line. Hey, you know what? I got more stories to share. I'm going to go on the show. I'm going to send an email. I think that's right. fantastic. If you find yourself in need of some preparedness type of stuff, you know, like 25 year food, 30 year coffee. Uh, water filtration, air filtration, all those things. You can check that out at preparewithhll.com. That's preparewithhll.com. And, uh, you know, get what you need. Take a look. See what they've got. See if they have something that you're in need of that you'd like to have just to, so that, you know, when as this thing falls apart, as we're looking at it all kind of collapsing around no, us, you know. It's not so, Joe. I know. <laughs> What am I thinking? You know, right. the, like it's all going to fall apart. It's not. This is America. It's not. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, when you, if you find yourself in need of those types of things, go ahead and check it out at preparewithhll.com. Ship, tell them about buying me a coffee. Yeah, buy me a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buy me a <laughs> yeah. yeah, buy me a coffee. Keep us fueled. Uh, it's a virtual tip jar. If you like the show, uh, you feel free. You want to. You hit the tip jar, go right ahead. We appreciate it. Uh, we're looking at it. And we thank the people that have already contributed. Uh, we are going to do some shout outs to those people. Right. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to compile a list. We've just learned how to find your names. <laughs> we, we did. We're learning as we go. You know, you're talking, you know, the, the, the two of us are not... Uh, Computer it literate. Yeah, we're not, we're not computer savants. Right. We're, you know, when... when that, yeah, we're just okay. not. So we'll just leave it at that. Right. There you go. <laughs> so anyway. So we'll, when you hit the website, you can click on that. Also click on the gear section. There you go. Check out what we got there. We're on all the social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all the other things we got there. So there you with go. that said, on with the show. On with the show. Well, you know what? Today we're talking with Scott. Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. We're doing really well. It's good to talk to you. 60, Thank you. 40. Well, 60, you know, shipper 60, 50, 40. 50. You know, 60, 40, that's still 100%. So mm -hmm. at least it's not less. <laughs> right. <laughs> 40, usually, usually he's like, you know, uh, 50, 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. hey, 60, yeah. 40 ain't bad, you know? <laughs> call, me on a, call me on a good mathematical day. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Scott, yeah. tell us. Tell, oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, 
tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of like how you got into the industry and a little bit about who you are. And then we'll get into your stories and all that. Well, I, uh, I got in the industry. Um, I started working uh, at a block company right out of high school. Uh, and I started off in the plant uh, making blocks, uh, cement blocks and um, patio blocks and, and the like. And uh, they had a driving, you know, they had drivers. Uh, my dad had worked there for, my dad retired from the place with 38 years of service. But at the time he had, I don't know, 20 some years or whatever. Um, I, uh, was working with him, um, in the plant basically. And then, uh, they had an opening <clears throat> out in the trucks and this was, you know, in the, uh, early nineties, uh, lady, well, early nineties, uh, when I, I started there in 88. Um, but it was the early nineties when I, they, I started thinking about going out on the truck and, uh, I asked the owner, uh, you know, if he would mind if I made the switch from the plant to a truck driver and you know he said he didn't mind so uh I basically I didn't go to driving school I basically uh rode with some of the old timers for a little while and they threw me in a truck and that was it that's really cool Off I went yeah so so you spent time <laughs> yeah. actually doing the job building the making the blocks and then you transitioned in, yeah. into delivering the blocks yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, I, I I worked there. I worked in the plant for like three years or four years. They actually sent me to, uh, it's called Betzer School. The the machine that made the blocks was called a Betzer machine. Right. And uh, it was this giant machine that, uh, you know, it, it loaded uh, aggregate from the top into a mixer. And the mixer mixed it, you know, with the water and the cement and everything. And then it shot it down this um, chute into this machine. And this machine was uh freaking loud it would if you can just imagine how hard you know cement blocks are this thing would uh dump uh wet aggregate inside of a mold and then the machine would head would come down and press it down into this mold and vibrate and uh, after it got done vibrating it would lift the head would lift up out of the mold and it would come down a, a assembly line and and it would go into racks and then the racks would go on a on uh rails the rails would end up in a kilns we had kilns that steamed the block so uh you know they sent me to the school to learn the machine and uh, i ran the machine on third shift me and my uncle did for uh like a year and a half on third shift so yeah it was it was cool i mean uh it, it, looking back it was probably one of my best jobs i ever had i did appreciate it at the time of course i was young and you know you know how that is young not married and at the time and you know didn't appreciate what i had i mean it was a union shop they paid union wages and you know yeah but yeah on. i was lucky enough that the guy let me out on the truck and and i didn't have to go to driving school right you time, saved yourself so. five thousand dollars right oh, off yeah. the bat <laughs> you better believe it yeah that's what i <laughs> that's what i understand yeah. heck yeah yeah that's fantastic yeah. so how, how did you how did you enjoy or I, I don't know, enjoy if that's the right term, but how did you make that transition into the trucks? Did that, did that go pretty smoothly for you? I mean, you went out with somebody, they showed no. you the ropes. So. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was young and, and bulletproof and, uh, uh -huh. you know, I, I was still throwing my wild oats and, uh, you know, it, I didn't realize, you know, I labored, I mean, you know, in the block plant, it was, you know, you labored, you lifted blocks, you know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times all day long, it depends on what kind of job that we were putting out or what kind of block we were putting out. But, you know, I mean, physically it was demanding. Well, you know, I had no idea how demanding driving was my first week of driving by myself. I think I, I, I was more tired then than I'd ever been, um, <laughs> laboring just because of the, you know, the mental right. uh, factor. And right. I didn't, I wasn't expecting that, you know, the, the concentration that you have to have, you know, that transition was, was really a smack in the face to me because I had no idea. I really didn't. Um, and you know, we drove, uh, block trucks basically. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it was a physical job as it was, but so yeah, it wasn't the physical part that got me. It was, it was more of the, uh, the mental, the mental thing, you know, right. sure. Sure. And initially when you got out of making the block, you thought, you know, I'm done lifting this stuff yeah. around and, you know, bags oh, and yeah. this and that. And I'm going to drive. That's easier. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. How do you like I, me I now? More blocks. 
<laughs> yeah, I probably listened to more blocks driving than I did making them. Right. Because, uh, you know, we, we, we were, you know, we were required 12, you know, we would have to make up the orders to put them on the truck because every job was different pretty much right. uh, for the most part. My, our specialty was basements. We, we stuck basements, um, for, you know, so if you think yeah, about bl- it, we block were, foundations uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were like the second one on the job site. So if you could think about that, you know, the, the only guys that were there before us really is the, well, the excavator was be first and then the, they would dig the hole and then they would come and pour the foundation for the footer. Right. But then that would be it until we got there, you know, and then, so you know, you talk about being stuck or, you know, most of the time we'd have to go, they would provide you usually with one driveway that would have these big rocks in it right. know, so that you get, but that in no way, that, no how. That, that was, would, that driveway drive was in. like, that driveway was about 15, <laughs> yeah. 20 feet and you had to go another quarter mile down the road well, and it was well, mud. That, or it was 25 <laughs> feet from where we really needed to be. Gotcha. You know, like we're towards the middle of yep. the house, you know, or in the middle of the basement. Right. But yeah, so our, we really were known in the industry is, uh, providing great service, uh, which that's, you know, what we were known for at, at that place. Um, so we, we on a daily basis, got our trucks buried. You know, I mean, I, I, a lot of times, uh, the bed normally would be up to my mid chest, uh, if I was standing in, in the, in the yard, but uh, a lot of times I'd get that truck so buried that I'd have to step down onto the bed. It'd be so buried in, in the mud, you know, the front end sometimes would just get totally buried up to the, you know, up to the bumper, uh, up to the grill. But then now that's where we uh, would earn our money. We use the boom to uh, lift the sides of the trucks up or the front of the truck up, whichever we needed to lift up. And we'd stuff blocks down in the, down in the hole, you know, down in the ruts. Down for you know, fill. Break the blocks up, stuff them. Yeah. And get us unstuck, get ourselves unstuck basically. <laughs> Because yeah. you don't want so that was, winching was, bill from the tow truck company. No, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. We prided ourselves on not calling tows because you know it costs the company money, of course. Right. And you know you were you were the weak idiot if you had to t- call a tow truck. You know, a lot of times we would tag team jobs just so that there was another driver there, you know, another truck there to pull us. But every one of us blew rear ends. Sometimes right. trying to get out of the mud. Uh, I know I blew probably three rear ends in my career there. I know some of the you know old timers even would blow a rear end once in a while because you know you just think oh, I can get out of this, you know, and you just right. give it that little extra oomph, and you know there it went. Yep. So that was a, a, an occurrence that happened often. Yeah. Yep. Well, not often, but but it happened. Sure. Because sure. those That's- those blo- those blocks don't float. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do not. No, they've no. definitely got they got some weight to them, and when you yes. get a bunch of them together, they got an awful lot of weight. That's to them. right. That's why they use right, them over exactly. in Jersey. And, yeah, <laughs> and if you can haul blocks, yeah, if you can haul blocks, you can haul anything because blocks are basically you know they fit in a cube like a puzzle, right? And they they're not they're not one hundred percent square. So as you drive, they move. You know, I mean, even if you strap them down, the middle sometimes will shake and vibrate and move. So we were all you know you really had to be on top of your game to not lose block on the highway and break somebody's window or sure. You know, right. Speaking of lifting the truck, you know, booming, like I would boom in and grab a cube of block and I would boom it out to lift. Maybe like the, say the front was buried. I would shoot a cube of block off the back of the truck and I could lift the front end of that truck up so high that I could literally walk up underneath it and change the oil if I wanted to. Wow. Nice. Um, you know, we'd stuff blocks down in the, you know, where the front was buried and lift it. Then we'd leave it, you know, let it back down lightly and after we got unloaded and hopefully we could get out, you know. Right. <laughs> that, that's always the hope is once you get unloaded, right. it, it's can we get out. So, you know, that, yeah, but, right. you know, it, yeah. to, to kind of give people kind of an idea of, of how dangerous, you know, that job can be. You had a, a, a short story in here about a guy who got the boom up by the electric. Oh, yeah. Talk about yeah. that a little well, bit. See, that was, yeah, that was a constant. That was a con- I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm no, sorry. no, no, that's okay. Go. That, that was a, that was a constant worry for boom truck drivers. Um, sure. Would be, uh, you know, the older trucks, you were connected to the truck by a, by a, a cord and you, it was had a, um, at the end of that cord, you know, there was a, a controller mm-hmm. and that's what worked the boom, you know, had left, right, telescope in, telescope out, uh, you know, fork up, fork down kind of deal. Sure. And we, the boom, I had, I had, a, had a cable ran through it and the cable was connected to uh, forks. 
and like a like a tow truck forks. And then the forks would, you know, scoop in, pick up a cuba block and bring it away from the truck and then you would, you know, shoot it where you need it to go. Well, the old days, you know, like I said, you were connected to the truck by a cord. Well, if you were standing if you had a hold of that cord, number one, <clears throat> and you were close to wires, the arc was could jump. Uh, I, I I had heard that it would jump. I never seen it personally. I had my hair stand up one time when I got pretty close to some wires, but but I never had an arc. Um, but you know, uh, lightning was a bad deal too. If lightning hit the boom, you're basically holding a 35 foot uh, lightning rod in your in your hands sure. when lightning storm came. Well, yeah, there was a guy uh, in the industry who was an old timer, um, been doing it for you know years and years and years. And, uh, he was, he was on his bed and he had a hold of the forks with one hand and he was working his boom with the other hand. And he had a cord, uh, on his truck cause he had an older truck and he just lack of concentration for one minute. And he hit some wires and it literally blew him out of his work boots. Um, died instantly, wow. uh, and come to find out later that he was going through a divorce and he probably had a lack of concentration, Everybody said he was bummed out and real, you know, bummed out about it, of course. Right. And, you know, that's all it took was like one, you know, the guy had been doing it for years, you know, could probably do it in his sleep, you know, uh, you know, any young guy would have learned a lot, a lot of things from him. He was, you know, really good at it, but you know, one minute of lack of concentration and that was it. But later on, they went to uh cordless, uh, remotes, which okay. is what I had in my, my last truck that I drove there. It was a Sterling L9000. I had a cordless boom that really changed the game. I still wouldn't unload in lightning, but you know, and I still wouldn't get closer wires. Uh, but, um, you know, I didn't have to worry as much, you know? Sure. Sure. I mean, that's one of the things about, you know, that aspect of the industry, what, what you're talking about there and, and, you know, an aspect of the industry all the way around is that, you know, we can't, we don't have an opportunity to have a moment where you lose your concentration in this industry right. as, as a truck driver all the way around. I mean, especially doing what, what, what you guys were doing there. Right. That, they that have is, it. They have it double, you it know, double it's, duty it's driving and it's unloading and loading. And unloading. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, so yeah. it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, you don't get a second chance, you know, in this right. industry, there's not a, there's not a, a redo. There's not a do over, you know, you have exactly. to, you know, if, if you lose that concentration, you're not paying attention for, uh, you know, a second right anything like, can happen like scott said you know what? he had his hair stand up well that's about as close as you want to really get to something oh, yeah. like that. exactly <laughs> right. yeah, yeah that's, that's that's that inner voice going hey stupid yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you know and, and the other aspect of that is like when when you're doing something like what what you're talking about okay that's that's on the operator who needs to be in, in you know concentrating on what he's doing for himself yep. and when you're in the driving aspect of that you have to be concentrating on what you're doing and you have to be concentrating on what everybody around you is doing while exactly. you're driving you because a lot of times and, it seems like they're not paying attention to what they're doing oh that's the thing uh you know on a daily basis uh and it's getting worse every year uh i, I you yes. know i see it um every day you know when i started year. driving there yeah. was no texting Right. You know, but we still had, you know, we still had the, uh, you know, the, the, the businessman going down the road, uh, looking at papers and right. briefcase would be open. You still had the, the business woman going down the road, putting on makeup and, yep. you know, or the guy eating sandwiches and, and talking to his buddy and driving with his knees. And, but yeah, I mean, and that's the thing about drivers that a lot of people don't quite understand is we, we have to live by a different code a lot of times mm -hmm. because the things that we do in our private life affect our job. You know, you can't, you can't have that luxury of going to a party at Christmas time and, you know, making that, uh, you know, having that one or two drinks and, and making that, you know, mistake of getting behind the wheel, yeah. even though, you know, you know, in your heart that you are totally sober and totally fine to drive, but you know, Try telling that to, uh, you know, the, the, your insurance company after you get stopped Yep, exactly. and it hit you with a DUI. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, we live by a different standard and we have to conduct ourselves accordingly, you know, outside of work. Yep. And, yeah. and you talk about concentration, uh, you know, yes, it's doubled because not only are we in charge of 
ourselves and our, and we represent our company and we and you know we we have a lot of things that could go wrong on our vehicles we definitely have to do everybody else's bidding because we got to watch out for everyone else. You know, it's funny. Uh, the longer I drove, I was married for 18 years. Mm-hmm. I got divorced, but when I was married, my wife used to get mad at me because I'd be driving or she'd be driving after I taught her how to drive. Uh, we'd be driving down the road and I'd say, watch that lady there. Or watch that guy there. Yep. They don't know where they're at. They're looking, they're, they're lost or they're getting ready to cut in front of you and turn. I can see it in his eyes. I can see him looking at his, and she would say, how do you know how they're going to do these things? I, I, you just do after a while, you just kind of locate that person. That's going to be trouble yep. and you fix on him. And that's not to say that there's the, you know, the, the, the person that out of the blue, you know, totally takes you by surprise. That definitely happens. But, but there usually is always that person out there that you can basically look at and predict just about what they're going to do. Right. I've said that. I've said that to my kid already. I, yeah. you know, we as drivers, you know, we're, we're focused, we're, we're taught looking 12 to 14 seconds down the road. Yep. These people yeah. in the cars, you're lucky they're looking at the car in front of them. Yeah. You know, right. Seeing right. what potential oh, yeah. road hazards going on. You know, we right. as drivers have become accustomed to, you know, like you said, hey, that guy's going to get off this exit. He's, he's just going to shoot right across. Yep. You know? Right. And, uh, right. yeah, a lot of, a lot of just, you know, quote unquote, you know, normal car four wheel drivers have no clue. They think, you know, we're clairvoyant. You know, if we were clairvoyant, yeah. I would have gave you the daily, uh, you know, the Powerball number and we'd be all retired right about now. <laughs> right. I, I would have used the Powerball number for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, I used to, I used to come home and tell my, tell my wife, I would say, you know what, honey, I think, I swear to God, my work truck is camouflaged because I swear these people don't see me out there. <laughs> yes, sir. It's like it's like you've got a cloaking device on it, and you've you've engaged yeah. it. And nobody sees you're there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you mean it's like they close their eyes and hope for the best. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Like, I've seen them cut me off to turn in front of me to make a right turn. <laughs> yes. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Come from behind me, get beside of me, risk your life and mine jump in front of me to turn. Yep. I, and I'll never get it in a hundred years. I'll never get it. Nope. Um, I, I totally agree. It's, it's one of those things. It's, <laughs> it's like when people are driving down the highway and they're in the, in the far left lane, you know, and they want to get off that exit that you're going by now. And they just cut right across traffic and, and they don't care. Yeah. You know, they have no their concern. Time's way more important than your right. Yes. That, right? Yes. That, yeah. That's the problem is, is everybody gets in their vehicle and they think they're, they're the only person on the road that matters. The problem you is, the problem is none of these trucks have stickers on the back saying this truck's equipped with Lamborghini braking system. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We can go 210 yeah, to right. zero and. Point one second. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it is one of those things. Yeah. And you, you almost have to have, you know, when I say this, I don't mean, you know, a gambling attitude, but you have to have an ability to read people. You know, right. just like, like when, yeah, you're, when you're playing cards with somebody, you, you know, some people know can read. Fold. Yeah. Some people can, because <laughs> yeah. if you don't, you, you know, somebody's going to get folded up right. inside their car. Yeah. <laughs> but well, right. you, you learn to read it, you know, you learn to read the yeah. traffic and what, right. what, you know, and, and, and if sure. it's rush hour traffic in the morning, it's, it's a free for all. I mean, it's literally a free, I, I just can't understand people. It's like I said before on this show, I wish people showed as much enthusiasm on the job as they show getting to the job. <laughs> because oh boy. you know the amount the amount of productivity <laughs> we'd have one. yeah it's <laughs> you know it'd be freaking but fantastic you know, and, and, and that brings me to one of my pet peeves uh which is uh driverless trucks um uh-huh. I, that, that is a sticking point with me man i that's a surefire way to get my my dandruff up is talk about that but but that is the 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 factor that i don't understand how that's gonna how they're gonna be able to do that yes. uh you know, with mm-hmm. nobody in the driver's seat, I don't understand how they're going to be able to account for that, for that unknown, for that total surprise unknown. Yeah. You know, the the guy that steps out from the curb, or yep. the lady that's totally lost. Or I had an old lady one time. We we're on the highway on Route 77, and um, it was an off, you know, an on ramp to get go to 77 North, I think it was, and. Uh, merge from traffic, you know, doing the speed limit, you know, and, and the, and the merge, you didn't have to really slow down that much. Well, this old lady was on, was in front of me and she was quite a few, uh, car lengths up, up. I could see her, but she stopped dead on this off on ramp, 
stopped dead and I'm behind her, you know, mm-hmm. doing the speed limit or more. And, you know, I got, I was able to get around her, but I mean, you know, the you know, she the, was just confused. She, she sure. thought she was in the right lane. She wasn't. She got confused and she stopped yeah. right. right in the middle of the road. Meanwhile, your pucker power, you know, excavated a little <laughs> oh, bit. Oh man, I got a pucker meter. For the end. <laughs> there. Oh boy. Yes. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> you were yeah, doing well, some... that reminds me of a story too. Uh-huh. Uh huh. When I was driving uh, for the block company, I was in a uh, an old Diamond Rio. If anyone knows what those were? Back, it was a late seventies Diamond Rio. Uh-huh. Yes. And, Not a uh, ring, people. Yeah, exactly. it's a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, and Brockway. Yeah, well, I, I, and, and speaking of trucks, uh, there was a mid seventies uh, Brockway. If that don't, if that's not one for the for the history books, it had an old screaming Detroit in it with two. Uh, it had two levers in it, you know, two stick shifts. Mm-hmm. I mean, this sticks. thing was a, was yeah. a job. To say. The steering wheel was. Uh, I mean, the steering wheel had to be. I don't know, uh, two foot, three foot <laughs> huge uh, circumference. <laughs> yeah, it was humongous. But I was going down this uh, incline, and at the time. I was a new driver. So I, I, you know, it was my, it was ultimately my fault. I didn't catch the air leak in my pre-trip because I didn't do a pre-trip because I was a new driver. And, you know, like I said, I was bulletproof. Right. I don't even drive in about a year. Uh, but like I said, I had to learn every, uh, everything the hard way. Well, I, I had a, an air leak uh, in one of the brake chambers and uh, I didn't really, didn't really come into factor until I was going with the flow of traffic. I think it was a 45 mile an hour speed limit or 55 mile an hour speed limit. And, uh, it was a downhill grade. It was probably 400, 500 yards, uh, down this hill. And as soon as I started down this hill, the light at the bottom, at the very bottom of the hill turned red. And, uh, there was about four or five cars in the left lane. And there was one single person in the right lane. And I could see her. It was a lady driving. And I started hitting my brakes and I knew right away that I was in trouble. I just started losing air. And my, and as I'm pressing down the brakes, I got that, you know, that brake fade and my, my foot just keeps going farther and farther to the floor and I'm smelling smoke and you know, I'm losing air. I'm not stopping. My brakes are fading. I'm, I'm not even slowing down at this point. I got on the horn and I just started laying on this horn. I mean, I was not giving it up and thank God this lady had enough sense to look in her rear mirror and see what was coming behind her. And she had enough uh, sense about her to get out of my way. She went through the uh, intersection because right after she went through it and got over, I blew through that intersection. If there had been cars coming, I'd have, I would have creamed them. But, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that, you know, I had to learn the hard way. And I never, ever got into a truck again without checking, make sure I didn't have air leaks. Uh, you know, I'm I'm lucky that I didn't have to learn the real hard way by right. killing someone or myself. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, yeah. you know, that that's, yeah, that's something I had to deal with back in the day. And, and we had very little um, maintenance on these vehicles. I mean, you know, it was, I mean, if you can remember in the 90s, the boom, uh, the building boom in the 90s. I mean, we were, yeah. we were so busy sometimes. I'd work seven days a week and, you know, there'd be no in the uh you know in the month's uh uh ledger you know i mean we there was just more basements than we could possibly stock you know they couldn't make enough block at the time running three shifts you know wow but yeah we stayed busy yeah and, and you know that, that's you know you have these these uh the, these times of boom where it's like hey we're everybody's busy and everybody's running you know, and you're running your you know your your keister off there's just no getting around that yeah. you're working all the time yeah and in this industry, yeah. it, 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 it can be so unforgiving, you know, yeah. again, you know, you, you can become tired, distracted, you know, all those things. And it's just, you, you know, you do the best you can to keep going, you know, cause that's, yeah. that's what it takes. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, you know, you don't really think about it. I, I thought it'd last forever. Yeah. You know, just young and just living life, married, raising kids, you know, and just at the time and, and. You know, you just, the good times are there and you didn't, I didn't really even realize how good they were. You know, um, the, the company ended up actually going out of business. Um, I actually, I ended up hurting my back on that job. Um, mm-hmm. I was off, I, I didn't work anywhere for seven years. Wow. I, I was off, I had back surgery. Uh, I, they, they put me, working with cop, put me through school. I went, uh, for computers and, um, 
did well. I made the dean's list and, and everything uh, at a business school. Um, and I got out and I, from just being in school, I was so stir crazy. You know, I went right back to driving. I, I couldn't even phantom uh, working in, in doors with, with uh, false lighting for the rest of my life. Right. right. You know, I just couldn't even think about doing something like that. I, <clears throat> I love driving. It's what I've always really wanted to do, you know, as far back as I can remember. So you, um, my dad, when I was a little kid, my dad, I think I told you, he retired from the place that I worked. Yeah. Um, he, when I was a little kid, I used to go in sometimes with him because he'd work third shift by himself cleaning up. And I'd stay there, you know, until my mom would come pick me up. And I, it was a, it was a, it was a palace for a little kid. It was a, it was a playland. They had sand and, you know, you could climb things and they had big, you know, piles of, you know, aggregates. And there was nobody there except for my dad, you know, and this giant, uh, you know, facility with all these blocks and, sure. you know, out in the yards. But uh, my dad would set me up in the cab of this uh, old man's truck that would come in there and bring aggregate for the blocks. And uh, I never forget what that feeling was when I got up in that driver's seat and I'm, you know, I'm talking, I'm probably only nine or eight or nine years old, maybe even younger. And I got up in there and I just went, wow, you know, to me, it looked like the cockpit of a plane, you know, all these levers and and dials and, you know, what's this do? What's that do? You know? Yep. And I got the bug early, man. And and that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, that's what I ended up doing. And, And, I'm happy. You know, I, I love driving. I really do. That's, there's only a couple of things in this world that I'd rather do more. And, uh, you know, it, like, you know, I, I like the outdoors. So I probably would have been a, a good biologist or, uh, you know, a uh, wildlife biologist or maybe mm-hmm. a game warden or something, but, but driving was, was my niche and, and I found it early. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's one of those things that's, that's really kind of cool about this industry. Is it, is it, you know, you, you either get that itch for it and you do it yeah. or you never do and you hate it, you know, <laughs> yep. it's just one of those yep. things. And you just, you know, and, and you will look for something else to do. That's what's going to wind up yeah. happening if you don't, if you don't enjoy doing it. That's why I see these guys driving and, you know, uh, they talk about how much they hate driving, how much they hate their jobs and mm-hmm. how they can't wait to retire. And, and that's all great. I, I get it. I mean, you know, sure. Everybody wants to retire eventually, but I swear to God, uh, I, is, I mean, I'm 53 now and I can't see myself retired. I mean, I want to drive as long as they'll let me, as long as I can get up in that cab and switch them gears and, you know, uh, n- you know, not run over somebody. I'm going to drive, you know, that's my plan. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it is a job that you can do, you know, you get into a company where, you know, you're doing drop and hooks and things like that. You know, like what somebody, yeah. we, we have guys at, at, at pit that will, retire and then come back and they'll just do some, you know, running around doing some drop and hooks and things like that. It's one of those things you can do that with, you know, it, yeah, it's that right. type and, of job. Yeah. And like the job I'm doing now is hauling milk. Um, it's a lot different than all in blocks. Let me tell you, um, you know, it, it is that kind of job where, you know, you could, you could be up in Asia and, and do this job, you know, yeah. uh, it's not really tremendously taxing on your body. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Chip, you got any thoughts on any but, of that? Milk, it does the body good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the hauling of milk is definitely a whole other animal. Some of the things I've hauled uh, from when I left, um, oh, one more story I'll tell you about when yeah. I was working at the block company. Um, well, maybe two, but there's one I, I was, they had this long nose international uh, tractor trailer, and uh, we used it to haul a cement tanker. We hauled our own cement in there, and then we used it to haul a 48 foot uh, boom trailer. The boom uh, was on uh, rails, and it would uh, you would start it up, and it would move backwards and forwards uh, on the bed, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was I was in that truck. And I was loaded going. I don't even know where I was going, but I was on 271 uh, going um, north, and um, there was a traffic jam. So I'm in. I got to be in the farthest left lane because 271 and 480 kind of split and I got to, I got to be in the left lane. So I'm in that left lane and there's traffic as far as I can see. And, uh, it stopped for a while. So as the traffic started up, you know, of course I put it in first and I'm letting off the clutch and I'm going, you know, and you know, as the traffic keeps going, I'm I hit second, I hit third, fourth, you know, came accordingly. And pretty soon, about a quarter of a mile after I had started, all of a sudden, I see this little sports car come spitting out from 
uh, underneath my, my vision, basically he was blocked from the hood and hit the van in front of him. I don't even know where he came from. He's just out of nowhere. This guy's hitting the van that's in front of him that I was driving using that van for my distance. I was keeping that van's, uh, 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 plate, uh, license plate, you know, in my vision. Mm -hmm. And I had a rule in traffic. I would try to keep the person's uh, license plates in, above my hood at all times. And that would give me enough stopping distance in traffic, you know, sure. of course on highway uh, speed, it'd be a little different, well, a lot different, but here, this guy, what he had done was when, when the traffic had stopped, he weaseled his way like catty cornered in, in front of me, kind of like half in half out of the lane. Mm -hmm. So the hood was so long and he was so small and it was, so, he got in so tight to me that when the traffic started, the normal progression of speed, as he fell in in front of me, I was already on top of him, bumping him all the way up this bridge. And it was probably a quarter of a mile worth of bumping. And, 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 and he, he just trumped his brakes. He just, he, he froze and hit his brakes and I'm bumping him forward. Boom, 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 all the way up this bridge. I didn't even know it. I couldn't feel it. Didn't see him. Well, when he finally, uh, finally, I don't know, something snapped and he hit the gas pedal and he hit the guy in front of him and we all stopped. I got out. This guy got out of his car and he was shaking so bad. I've never seen anybody shake like this. He was shaking. Literally, you could probably almost hear his knees knocking together. I thought he was acting at first, but he was literally petrified. Because here's this giant international grill is in his back you know, seat probably for a quarter of a mile. And I don't see him and I'm bumping him. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm sure it was probably knocking him for a loop. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> but, but, but. You know, here this guy, you know, and I, I didn't get in trouble for that. The, they cited him for uh, giving me lack of, um, what did they call it? N not allowing me uh, sufficient uh, room to stop or, or something of that nature. But mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't get ticketed. Uh, they, the insurance people and everybody uh, faulted him for cutting cutting me off, basically cutting yeah. in front of me because uh, I never seen him. I mean, that's, that was so easy to do. Um, yeah. And then one time, uh, I'll tell you this story and then maybe we can move on. But I, one time I was on the highway and I was in an old um, mid eighties uh, Mack truck um, with a, the boom, the bed was steel. Uh -huh. The other beds on the block trucks were, were plywood with a, with steel uh, rimming, but this was a total steel bed. The whole thing was steel. So you can imagine how heavy this truck was. And I had a fully loaded of the heaviest block that we had. So I was really heavy. I don't even really know exactly how heavy I was. I was probably over 70,000 and I'm driving down the highway down 90 and, uh, I look in my mirror, I'm going to make a lane change. And, uh, I see this guy, you know, kind of way far behind me. And I, you know, you don't just rip these trucks in, in lane. So I put my blinker on, I'm easing over. And by the time I got over, he's on top of me. He was flying. In other words, you know, just flying. Well, he got mad because he thought I cut him off. Well, you know, if he wouldn't have been doing 110 miles an hour, I never would have, you know, cut him off. If he right. had been doing normal speed, I, that never would have even got that close. Well, he got up next to me and got around me, got in front of me, and he tromped his brakes. I'm talking a brand new Chevy pickup, still had the 30 day tag on it. Wow. He tromped his brakes and he stuck his finger out the window. He stuck his hand out the window and was giving me the number one sign, you know? Yep. One hand on the driving uh, steering wheel, one hand out the window, giving me the finger, and he stopped. And I don't know what he thought I was going to do, but I, I tried dropping my brakes. My truck laughed at me. I don't, you know, it was like, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I did. I, I think I sped up. I don't even think it slowed down. But I hit my brakes. Nothing happened, and I hit him, and it was almost like golf ball effect. It was like ping, and when I hit him, he shot like shot like off of his wheels out in front of me. The truck's going all over the place. He's trying, you know, that hand's not out the window anymore, giving me the finger. Both of his hands are on the wheel trying to fight this thing, keeping it straight. I don't know how he ever kept it straight. But this, I caved in the back of that truck. The, that tailgate was laying in the back of the truck up next to the cab. Wow. And he never stopped. He never pulled over. He never called my dispatcher. Not, I never heard another thing about it. I pulled over. I was hoping he was going to stop. I was going to whip his ass at that time. I was young and dumb and, you know, full of testosterone. Right. But he never pulled over even. I mean, nothing. 
Wow. And uh, that was the weirdest thing. I mean, I'd had some weird stuff happen at that point, but that was very, very strange. That I never heard nothing about that. I don't yeah. know what he told his insurance company. I'd like to hear that conversation. Uh, I hear that, man. <laughs> that just that's got to be a wild one because that you know. But that's you know that's the stuff that people think you can do to big yeah. trucks. Oh yeah, you know, you can yeah. just slam yeah. on your brakes and stop. You know, oh, yeah. they're they're stopping in front of me. They're they're you know do, giving me a brake check. So I you know. I got to slam on my brakes now. And guess what? It ain't stopping. You know, it, they it, don't realize they don't. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you trying to mess with there, bud? Yep. And me or you, because it's your funeral that you're, <laughs> that you're contemplating, not mine. <laughs> That's exactly Trust me. Right. I'm not going to put it in the ditch to keep from hitting you in the ass in because you're being an asshole. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do it. Yep. I, I'll put it in the ditch to, to, to miss a, a car full of kids or something. But you know, you want to brake check me. I, I'm not going <laughs> to. Sorry, pal. Yeah. We're going to see what happens. Exactly. Cause Hope it, for the it, best. Yeah. I mean, what, <laughs> before we, what can you do? Yeah. I mean, what, what'd you call it earlier? <laughs> a coffin on wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's really what you're doing. You're, you're creating yourself this, this, you know, this, this box that the potential yeah. is for you to die in. If you, you know, if you yeah. don't stop doing these types of things and, and people don't, they don't learn. They don't, they don't stop. No. You know, you, no. you just, all you want is people to derive with respect on the road for everybody else. Yeah. I mean, are there drivers out there that aren't worth their, their weight? Uh, uh, of course, there, there, there's some pretty charming yeah. drivers out there and more and more every year I, I find. Um, but there, for the most part, most of the guys out there that have been doing it for a few years, you know, they know what they're doing. They're professional drivers, number one. And, you know, I know the rules of the road. I know the laws of the road. Do I do something stupid every once in a while? Yeah, I do. I, I got to apologize to people on the road. Of course, you know, yeah. I, Sometimes, you know, I'll cut a driver off and because I got no choice, I could have probably stopped, but, you know, I seen an opening. I didn't mean to do it. You know, it happens, but, but for the most part, we all kind of watch out for each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not trying to do things right on purpose right. on the road to, to tick somebody yeah. else off. You know, you, you, it, that's not the point yeah. of what we're doing. We're trying to do what we do as safely as yeah. we can, as, as responsibly as we can. You know, yep. and, I got to get out there and do it funny. tomorrow, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I got to be back out here because this is how I make my yep. living. So, you know, let's all exactly. just, you know, kind of take a, a little bit of a, a relaxer here and, and just all get to where <laughs> right. we're going together. You know, let's all just take it easy. Yep. And it, 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 it's just, we, you, you're, you're so right when you said how things have changed over the years. I mean, you look at how we look now and how things are, what the driving situations are now and, there's more cars on the road now than ever before. You've got more people yeah. in a hurry to get to where they want to get to than ever before. Yeah. You've got more distractions in cars and in trucks than ever before. Right. And it, yeah. it, it's like we, we, everybody just, you know, it seems like we, we have the mentality of, I'm just going to turn everything off. I'm going to turn off my brain and my car is going to yeah. tell me when I get too close to the, somebody in front of me, or, you know, it, it, I, I got these little lights on my, my, uh, my side mirrors that, that let me know when somebody's coming up in my blind spot now. So I don't have to pay attention to anything. Right. And they right. don't, exactly. <laughs> consequently, no, they, they, don't. they turn it all off. They turn themselves off. And, yeah. you know, and what's funny, uh, you know, I, I, I taught <clears throat> my girls how to drive. I have two daughters mm -hmm. and, uh, they, they went to driving school, but I also, you know, dad gave them pointers and, and you know, kind of try to give him some, some words of wisdom from his years on the road. And I think that you can tell the kids that have parents that are professional drivers and the kids that don't. Because I think, you know, my kids probably, you know, they, they look at some of the things that I've been talking about over the years and they've heard me, you know, complain about it and, and things that, you know, downright are, uh, you know, dangerous. And I think that they, they kind of give drivers a break, you know, on the road and, and, you know, because their old man's a driver and, you know, they, they try not to do those stupid things. You know, I think that they're better drivers for it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, that, that is the thing is you know, you, you almost feel like you wish people would go back and relearn how to drive, you know, Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, some of the, I tell you, some of these truck drivers coming out of truck driving school, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay them. I wouldn't let them haul a, a dog house for me. I, I'm some of these guys, I don't even understand. I don't understand it. I, I, Am I that old now? I mean, I, I don't get, I, I just don't understand this new batch of drivers coming in. You don't understand uh, it. 
They don't understand it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They can't even read English. How in the world did they get a CDL? Yep. I don't get it, man. I, I just don't. I, I tell you what, man. I had a guy. I was at a truck stop. And uh, I was parked. And uh, there was an opening. I was on the end. And there was probably eight uh, openings between me and the guy that was closest to me. This guy come in there. and he tried to back into one of these spots. Mm -hmm. He almost hit me a couple of times. I'm talking eight driving, you know, eight, you know, eight spots that were in between me and the guy next to me, the closest guy next to me. This guy couldn't get him into any of those spots. He couldn't back that truck up to save his life. I actually got out and a guy got out that was parked in front of me and we both met in the middle. And I, I looked at him. I said, we have to be getting pumped here. Where are the cameras? There, there has to be, they have to be filming a show here or something. It's got to be a comedy bit. No, it's a show. There's no right. way in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way in the world this guy is that bad of a driver. But he was. He, it, it, it was for real. He, he could not back that truck up in any of those spots. I, I, <laughs> and he's out there driving next to my family sometimes, yes. probably. You know, that's what gets me. Exactly. You know, the, the, the girl that I live with, you know, I, I wouldn't want her driving you know, next to this Yahoo out on the road, you know, I mean, what kind of decisions are you going to make it when the shit hits the fan, you know? Yep. Exactly. Uh, it, it is scary. It is scary. You're, you're exactly right. It is really scary, you know, because yeah. he's supposed to be a professional. He's yeah, literally exactly. supposed to know what he's doing. You know, it's fresh out of school. Yes. <laughs> well, it's like I say, you know, on our trucks, we have, you know, million miles, 2 million, 3 million miles driven, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I just want yeah. my sticker to read. I have more miles in reverse than you have forward. <laughs> Buddy, I've used that. I've used that uh, a couple times. Please. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, yes, sir. That's a good one, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went from the block company mm-hmm. um, to um, let's see. I went from there. Uh, I was out of work for a while. I worked um, at a. Um, I went to work for a. Um, place that hauled biofuels basically and um waste from biofuels mm-hmm. uh we hauled uh I, I drove a um a um oh man i'm drawing like a mac sterling or not a, a mac uh i can't think of the name of the mac advantage maybe it was but um um hauled tankers exclusively okay and uh, um yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. Um, then I got away, uh, I left there. I actually went to work in, in, in inside of a plant. Uh, my cousin had worked for this place for years and years and years, and it, I, I thought it was a good company. But I got I got off the truck for a minute, and um, I was going through a thing, and uh, I I couldn't. I, at the end of the, I was I was off the truck for a year, and at the end of this year, I, uh, this place that I had left um, called me and asked me if I wanted to come back. At first I said no. And then uh, um, I got to thinking about it. About a couple months later, I called her back and I said, hey, you still looking for a driver? And she said, please, please come back and work for us. <laughs> so I left there in a hurry. I, I tell you, I, I couldn't work in, inside with a bus hanging over me. I, I, would, I, would, I would crack up, I think. I would, I would, I would lose it. Um, You'd see me on the news probably with some people uh, holding them hostage or something, <laughs> something stupid. But I mean, I mean, it literally was terrible. It was most, it was one of the most terrible years of my life. And I could, I was so happy to get back on the truck. I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. But uh, after I, I, I went, I went from there, I, I went to a better, um, I worked there for a little while uh, after that. And then I went to a better um, place uh, that hauled uh, a lot of uh, hazardous chemicals and, there I got my first taste of hauling 53 foot van trailers, um, which I'd never hauled before. Okay. And, um, so that was a new experience. I learned a lot from them. Uh, it was a great place to work, um, at the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, the, the only thing really, uh, the only thing that really happened to me there, I was uh, on the, uh, turnpike doing like probably 75, 77, somewhere in that area, mm-hmm. uh, miles an hour. And I blew a steer tire fully loaded with a 53 foot trailer, a 50 foot van trailer, uh, fully loaded on my tra- uh, tractor. I, I blew a steer tire. And let me tell you, that was a ride that I won't soon forget at all. Um, I don't know if you guys ever blew a steer tire or not while you're driving, but that is an experience. Nope. <laughs> I have not. I have, I have, I have not had that happen. Ship. 
You? Yeah. Nope. Never, never have happened. But I bet you that left a couple of racing stripes <laughs> in your pants, huh? <laughs> I but I tell you what, on the pucker scale, that was probably an eleven <laughs> out of ten. <clears throat> that definitely uh, puckered you right up. Right. I, I literally uh, driving. I was talking to my girlfriend at the time. She heard it uh, go. She heard it go boom. Um, but I'm just driving along, minding my own business as we do. And uh, luckily, there was nobody to the right of me. I blew a, a passenger side steer. So there was nobody in the right lanes of me. And uh, instantly, I was in the next lane. I didn't even know what had happened. I was already in that lane. It, it jerked me over so fast. Wow. And uh, then there was that lane and then the shoulder. I had enough, uh, I don't know if it was uh, strength or adrenaline or whatever, but I had enough adrenaline to fight the wheel, not to hit the burn wall. I made it to the berm and got it stopped. And, uh, buddy, I tell you, like I said, that was a pucker, a big pucker there, but that's the first and only time that's ever happened to me in my career. Mm -hmm. And I hope it never happens again. Let me tell you. Oh my word. I can imagine, you know, that's that's why it's one of those things that you look at. And I've said this a million times on the show. That's why you just, you hate when people ride right next to you, you know, driver's side, passenger side, if you're in a middle lane or hammer lane and they're they're on your right side or, or, you know, you're in the right lane. And they're, they're on yeah. your left-hand side. It's like, just don't, you know, anything can happen. It, it's, it's still right. a vehicle. It's still, you know, at, something mechanical can go, a, a tire can blow, yep. anything can happen. And people will just sit yep. there and they'll ride right next to you. It's like, do you not understand? And apparently they don't, they don't understand they the don't. danger that's around them. They don't give it another know? thought. No, no, they don't. It's like, oh, those, know, those tires I, never blow. We, we, my girlfriend and I ride, uh, rode motorcycles. You know, we both had motorcycles at one time. Um, and we, you know, she's the same way as I am. Anytime we were on the road, even in our cars, you know, we don't ride next to semis, you know, cause we know what happens, you know, yes. you know, you get past the semi as fast as you can and, and yeah. you get to where, and, and I tell everybody, if you cannot see that driver in his mirror, he cannot see you. Yep. I can't even say that enough or loud enough for people, new drivers, you know, make sure you can see that guy's eyes in the mirror because if he can't, you know, if you can't, he can't see you. You're in yeah. his blind spot, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, that's why it's like, you know, you, it's one of the things that they, you know, they, they, they hammer home with us all the time is make sure you're not driving in a pack, try and get out of it, either pass or, or either get through it and, and speed up and get around yep. it or, or back out of it. So the pack can get ahead of you. Like you just don't want to be in a crowd of people because there's you know, right. a crowd of vehicles. Cause there's so many things that, that can go wrong. Just, it, it just is right. including goofy decisions that people make, you know, it's, it's not yeah, just whether right, or not you right. blow a tire or something, you know, whatever, but you know, the decisions that people will make and, and what they got to do and what they're going to try and do, you know, there's just so many variables. And again, like you said, I mean, when you think about the, the whole automated trucks and you're like, yeah, you, yeah. until <laughs> you can plan for every, uh, every scenario that's out there, you know, and actually, yeah. I mean, how, how, how are you going to do this? You know? So I, 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 I kind of agree with you. Yeah. You can plan for every scenario and still something's going to surprise you. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> Cause you can't Guaranteed. plan for them all. Cause uh, yeah, the minute you exactly. think you have everything figured out, somebody does something exactly. crazy and you're like, really? <laughs> what didn't see exactly. that one coming? I mean, it, it, that makes me, reminds me of another story. I, I was driving down the road and, and, and everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing uh, on the road. It just happened. This guy decided he was going to go fishing that day. And mm-hmm. he, t- he tied a boat to uh, strap down a boat on the top of his car. Well, either one of the straps broke or he didn't tie it tight enough or whatever, but he went by me. He was going too fast with a boat on top of his car, but he went by me and he got in front of me a, a, a few uh, uh, lengths and that boat come off of the front top of that car. Wow. And when that happened, I could, all, I heard it go, Woof. you know, it made a noise. <laughs> And this thing's up in the air spinning like, uh, I don't even like to throw it. We back. have liftoff. <laughs> and I, yeah. And I'm looking at this thing like in slow motion. And I'm looking at this thing going, oh my God, there's nowhere I can go. There's people on both sides of me. I wow. got to grin and bear this. Hopefully the nose of this thing, don't, I'm, I'm, I'm already seeing it. The nose of this thing's going to come down and go right through my windshield. I can mm-hmm. just see it. Thank God. I don't even know how it happened. It went right over me and uh, hit the back of me, but bounced off. It didn't hit my windshield. I thought that's exactly where it was headed because Murphy, you know. Oh, yeah. He always usually shows up in my life. <laughs> yep. Enter Mr. Murphy and his law. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like crazy. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. is, and that's, you know, again, that's, you know, the, the variables that variables that you can't plan for. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was a young driver too, but I, I you know, I knew enough. If I could have, I would have gotten out of the way, but you know, it's like trying to dodge a freaking lightning bolt. You know, it's like, how do yeah. You, yeah. You know, I've only really been really scared, like deep down scared of my bones a couple of times in a truck. <clears throat> Most things don't really shake me too bad, but one time I was driving uh, in a, in a rainstorm and, uh, I was probably driving too fast, but I was at highway speeds. I was, uh, doing 70 or above a little bit. And I was at the bottom of this hill. Uh, it was a, a, de- a decline and I think I was 271, one of those real deep hills that got over there by the Cuyahoga Valley. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was raining really hard and I got down to the bottom of that hill and I started hydroplaning and I'd never felt anything like like that in my life and i i even spun a a, a 43 foot uh flatbed one time all the way around on the highway on ice in a semi wow but and that didn't that didn't shake me as bad as this shook me i i felt totally um i was not in control for a good three seconds and that three seconds uh so many things went through my mind you know i could feel the tires above the water skating you know it, it, it was such a weird weird strange feeling and that fear hit me so deep down inside that uh, i mean i i locked up i just i couldn't even think because i was headed i was drifting towards the the berm and and you know there was a, like a nice little cliff on the other side of that berm so you know it's like that scared me that really scared me it taught me a valuable lesson that day i really respect rain a lot more after that <clears throat> and yeah. I wasn't a real new driver when it happened. I, I was pretty experienced by that time, but there's nothing you could do about it. it just, that happens. Hydroplane is a thing. It happens. Yeah. And, and, and the funny thing is, is people think, well, that, you know, that truck weighs so much. How can, how in the world can that thing hydroplane? It can That's do what it. I thought. <laughs> yeah. It'll do it. <laughs> you know, just, I don't know how, day. but it'll do it. <laughs> I can't explain the physics, but I can tell you what it yeah. feels like. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, here, here is two of the physics: a, a flatbed and empty. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it is it's yeah. it's the it's the craziness of what we do, and yeah. you just you know you you pray every day that you get home safely. You know, yeah. there's 101 ways to die on a truck <laughs> or more. <laughs> yes, there is. There really is. Yes. There really is. I mean, if if you don't do it to yourself, somebody else is doing it to you. I tell you, one of the most dangerous things you can do in a truck is, is be on the berm and get out of your driver's store. That, yes, sir. <laughs> that is the truth. To this day, that 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 strikes fear in me. I, I I cannot stand to be broke down or have to pull over for some reason and have to get out of that driver's door. That makes me jumpier than a frog. I'm telling you, I, it's, that this goes all over me. Yeah. Because people don't obey the law. They don't get over. Exactly. You know, they don't give you that common courtesy. And a lot of drivers don't. You know, and I don't understand why, you know, and it's that whole thing we were talking about. These new batch of drivers, they have no respect for anyone. Yep. You know? Yep. It's, it's become a different industry, you know? It, yeah, it has. You, you would think it that really in time has. things would become more professional and it's like, they, they haven't, they, they've actually. No, that, no. Yeah. And even with the laws getting more strict, you know, it seems like the laws get stricter and, uh, the expectations get lower, you know, it, yeah. it's like, it's going backwards. Yeah. But you know what? I, they're still not going to, uh, shake the love of driving out of me. I don't care how many idiots got on the road. I still love doing it every day. I really do. Right. And, uh, all, all we can do is, you know, do what we're supposed to do, do that next right thing and try to be as cautious as you can and do your job, you know? That's it, because you know the the other option is to find yourself working in a warehouse or working, you know, in an office. Like, <laughs> you're you know, right, and that's yeah. your other option. No. So, you know. you're right, exactly, and you're right. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. And and, and like, or try you, to retire early, or try to retire early. You know, the thing is, is yeah. when you do this, you, you do this for long enough that you can't see yourself working inside. You know, you right. can't see yourself working in an office, and there's nothing wrong with those jobs. I don't mean. To, to, no. you know, to be, to God do, bless them. To, yeah, I mean, thank God they're there to do those jobs because it's just, right. you know, you, you spend so much time out and you're, you're, you know, kind of, you're, you're, you're in charge of your ship, you know, and you're doing right. what you right. need to do, uh, to be stuck yeah. inside 
is just, I can't imagine if I, if you work the same amount of hours working in a warehouse as you do driving a truck, you're like, I couldn't do that. Oh God. I, you know, I can't do that. I can't be stuck. Oh, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd be going like you. Oh, I'd be going stir it. crazy, you know? Absolutely. Oh dude, I could work a 60, 60, 65 hour week on a truck and not even bl- blink an eye. Doesn't even feel like a 60 hour week. Yeah, and that's you, know, you, you, you got of, that in by indoors. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Thirty hours seems like you know. Yes. Doing all doubles inside. Yes. That is, it's the yeah. truth. It is just the truth. It's yeah. it's the nature of what the job does to you because you get so used to being out and about, you know, doing the yep. things you want to do and and going where you want to go. You know, it, it, you know, you're going to wherever your delivery is, but you're the person who's who's doing it. You're, you know in charge and you're the one. Yeah. I mean, you got things, you rules, you got to follow and what the company wants and yeah. the, you know, whatever, but you're, you're not stuck in a single place dealing with 50 other people. It's stuck in that single place and, and all right. of the interpersonal right. struggles and squabbles and problems and all those things that go on. <laughs> it's just because we're human right. beings, right. you know, yeah. <laughs> you put yep. a bunch of people together in one office and yeah, most people are going to get along, but there's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be something that oh, happens. Man. And so when, if, yeah, if a problem, the there's always going to be chitter chatter at the water cooler. <laughs> there is. If, if, yeah, there's, it. if there's a problem exactly. inside my little office, it's with me and right. myself. Yep. <laughs> and there's it's no between getting away the three from of us, me, myself, and I. You got it. <laughs> and, and you know what? That's that's funny you say that because I always call it my office. That's my office I go to that's every it. day. And people, I'm 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 kind of known anywhere I go for keeping my truck clean. And even if it's an old truck, like now I'm driving a 2009 uh, L9 uh, L9000 uh, Kenworth. Um, uh, well, it's an L9 a W9000 L. That's what it is, I think. Yeah, W9000, not an L9000. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's an old truck. It's got some dings and, and some faded paint and, and, and all that. But I tell you what, I, I really love driving it. It's a fun truck to drive. And I keep that thing, you know, when I got in it, there was mud on the dashboard. I'm not talking dust. There was mud on the dashboard. Wow. It's not like that anymore. It's, it's, you could eat in there and not have to worry about getting botulism. You know what I mean? <laughs> But, uh, but <laughs> that's a plus. Uh, I, I've kind of known, you know, people, why do you clean your truck so much? Why do you keep it so clean? You know, why do you, it's, it's not even your truck. And, and I say to them, that's my office, man. That's, that's where I spend most of my time. I spend more time in there than I do at, in, in the house, yes. at the house, you know? Exactly. Why that's, would I want it clean? That, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yep. Exactly. I, I want to at least, you know, uh, tolerably clean. You know, it doesn't have to, you know, yeah. uh, you realize what we do and you, you know, you get in and out of the rain, you get in and out. Sometimes your boots get muddy or whatever. Yeah. yeah right. You know, but y- you want it to at least be presentable. You know, I don't want right. to, I, I don't, I don't want to sit in a pigsty to drive. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to open up the door and have dust flying around because right. there's so much dust on my floorboard yep. uh, that it, you know, it gets on my sandwich that I'm eating or whatever the case may be. Sure. Exactly. You know, or be afraid to roll down the windows because you're going to get a dust storm in there. You know, I mean, that's just, that's <laughs> ridiculous. It is. Yes. But yes. Some drivers is. are like that, man. Some guys, that's the way they roll. I, I don't get it, but, but whatever. No, you're totally Peace right there. there. Yes, sir. You are totally right. <laughs> did you, did you ever do any training or anything like that? Did you ever train other drivers? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did. I, I actually did some training at, uh, the, the first place at, at the block company. Uh-huh. Um, there at the end I was training some guys and boy, that was an experience. Let me tell you, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, you know, we weren't, I wasn't training in semis or anything. I was just try training on the, on the, mainly on the dump trucks and the, and the block trucks. But, um, I first, I would let the guy drive, you know, and, uh, let him drive to the job, you know, well, actually what I'd start doing is letting him drive back while the truck was empty. That would be the first thing I'd do. I'd first get a feel for the guy, talk to him, let him drive back empty. And then if he did okay, then I would allow him to drive full the next time and, you know, then drive back empty. Well, a couple guys broke me of that. Um, because uh, I'm telling you, I told him right off the bat, you don't pay me enough to put my life in danger like this. Um, you know, do you want to hire these, this guy, you know, and then they, they would take what I'd say and they, they mill it around. Like, I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, why do you have me train if you don't want to respect what I'm telling you? This guy's not worth it. Don't hire him. Right. You know? Or this guy's okay. You know, he, he, he's, he's good, you know, hire him or whatever. But, but yeah, I had a couple guys, um, 
scared me I mean, <laughs> in the pasture seat. I'm looking for the pedals and, and the gear shifter, you know, and, and not really understanding. What. I had to ask the one guy, hey, do you wear glasses and are you supposed to have them on now? This guy would wait to the very last second to, to hit his brakes anywhere, like behind, uh, coming up to a light, you know, or, or, you know, if he was parking or what, it was like, run, 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 stop. You know, it was yeah. like, I was getting whiplash, you know? Yeah. And oh, I Magoo. tried to tell him, you can't do that. When you're, you know, especially hauling blocks. You can't oh, yeah. do that jerky, herky kind of thing. You know, he yeah. didn't get it. He couldn't get it. He was worried about the girls walking down the street. You know, we're talking the nineties. So the mini, the micro minis were in style. Right. So here, this guy's looking down in cars and he's, wolf howling wolf whistling i don't know about you guys but if i was with a trainer i would want to kind of watch my p's and q's at yep. least until i got my own truck right yep no these guys would be hanging out the truck wolf whistling not paying attention i literally made one guy pull over and i said you'll never be at the helm again while i'm in the passenger seat never i took him back to the yard and i said get out and I never let them back in my truck again. Wow. And they're like, well, how are we supposed to? I, I don't care. I do not care. And that's what I told them. You don't pay me enough to put my life in danger for, for that kind of guy. Oh, so I, I fire him now. For fire what they now. pay you for training, you can't buy enough <laughs> drugs for it to compensate. <laughs> right. <Exactly. laughs> they don't have enough whiskey at the bar uh -huh. when I get off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, like, when you get somebody in the behind the wheel that drives like that, who, who drives that herky-jerky way, they're on the, you know, 100% on the fuel and 100% on the brakes, and they, uh, you know yeah. that's how they drive their car. Exactly. You know exactly. that's what they do in there because exactly. they're so used to it that that's what they think yep. they can do in a big truck. You, you know they're replacing their brakes every, every three, three months or yes, so. Yes, sir. You got that right. You know that's what's oh, happening. Oh, man. It, it's yep. crazy. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. And yeah, that, I had some definite, I had some, I had some, I had some pretty decent experiences too. I, I met some pretty, pretty nice guys and really wanted to learn the trade. But, but yeah, yeah I had some doozies, believe me. I yeah. had a guy one time, I told the company, I don't think he's going to work out. It wasn't a definite hard no, but I said, you know, that this one's up to you. I don't know. I, you know, if I owned the company and drove with him, I probably wouldn't give him a job, but, you know, maybe he'll get better. You know, I wasn't a total, you know, jerk about it. Right. But, I, um, so <laughs> they hired him and, uh, and it, like I said, it wasn't a hard no on my part. Mm -hmm. So a few days later, I'm pulling out of the yard and I see him coming down the road and he's he's the truck's going and then it would slow down and stop. Then it would go and then it slow down and stop. And there's smoke pouring out of this truck. He roached the clutch so bad that he didn't even make it back into the yard. They literally had to tow the truck about 200 feet inside our yard because he didn't make it. He roached the clutch totally wow. burn it up in one trip, one trip. Wow. Yep. There must have been something wrong with that yeah. clutch. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the driver. <laughs> there must have been something wrong with that clutch. Because that just can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wanted to say, well, he, you know, the way I trained him. Right. Of course. Yeah, it's your yeah. fault. It was a trainer never. Well. <laughs> wow. There are some things you just that. can't help, you know. I mean, sometimes, on. as I say, you just can't fix stupid. There you go. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wears you out trying. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, it's just, it, yeah, it's crazy. Right. And that's, you know, I mean, that, that's, again, that's the industry. You, you, you're either going to rise or fall in this thing and you're, yeah. you know, you're going to, you're going to figure it out or you're not, Right. you know, and hopefully you know, driving's that, not that kind of job. Yeah. It's not the kind of job that you go, you know what, I'm going to go get this job and make some money and, yeah. and do something else. It really isn't that kind of job. Yep. It's you got to devote yourself. You do. Because it, because it's not a nine to fiver. You right. are not going to do a nine to five in this industry. It's just not going right. to happen. And, and unless you're and like willing to do before, that, you know, it, 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 it it's going to be a pain. And you're going to hate and like it. Like I said before, you know, you're, you're on a microscope. You're held by a different standard in yes. your personal life as well. Yep. So it's a commitment, you know, driving is a commitment. It is. It, it literally is. And you're held to that higher standard all the time. Not all like the you time, said in your personal life, but when you're on the, when you are on the clock, when you are do when you're driving, yep. when you, when you're chewing up your, your, your log, you are yep. exceptionally, uh, in a, in a, a much greater way 
under the microscope yep. because there is DOT yep. out there. There's there, there are the regular police officers out there. There is the public out there because you know what, when you're rolling down the road with a 48 or a 53 foot box van, you are a rolling freaking billboard. Your company's yep. name is plastered all over the sides. It's on the back. Yep. You know, you, it, you know, it, it, that's just the way it is. And so everybody's looking and everybody's paying attention. And, and nowadays, unfortunately, everybody's going after the people with deep pockets. Yeah. And you know, drivers, it's the only, uh, well, one of the only industries that we are governed by, uh, every single, uh, uh, police entity or, or a law enforcement entity out there. Yep. Anybody and everybody can pull a truck over for any reason whatsoever. Yep. From game warden, you know, right up to, uh, you know, uh, town cop, sheriff, a uh, state trooper, DOT, uh, PUCO. I mean, anybody can pull a truck over for any reason whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, you got to be ready to, to, you know, open up the back and, you know, show them proof you're not hauling any labels or you know uh, you know the 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 job before the milk job i i drove we we there was a furnace at their yard and they it was an environmental uh uh place basically uh we we hauled dangerous chemicals there um and we either used the fuel to to fire up the um the furnace to to burn the other stuff that wasn't uh, fuel related, the dangerous chemicals, and it would burn it up into nothing. And they have all these special, you know, filters and sure. stuff to be able to do that. Well, uh, ATF used us for um, dangerous uh, drugs uh, that were confiscated in raids. Um, they would company, they would accompany the truck driver. Uh, you know, they would uh, shadow the driver. Mm -hmm. on the way to the yard. Um, and when you got to the yard, there'd be guys standing in the yard with their uh, M1s or their ARs rather. And, uh, uh, you know, full battle fatigues, um, you know, scoping out the situation, making sure that the cartel is not going to try to confiscate the drugs back. You know, uh, we would take it to where I worked there and they'd burn them up in the furnace. Um, not only uh, drugs, but um, illegal um, shipments of any kind, say like, uh, uh, counterfeit shoes or counterfeit makeup was a big one because mm -hmm. it's so dangerous. Um, and a lot of people don't realize how much of that stuff uh, comes in, uh, through, um, uh, shipping containers, sure. uh, through our ports, you know, every one that they catch probably two get through, um, you know, the makeup, it was a big one because, you know, coming from overseas, China was a big one. They didn't, they don't test it and they would use even chemicals in their makeup and they would, they would, uh, put put it under a name brand and sell it for full price. And, you know, sometimes that stuff would be dangerous, you know, enough to kill a person if they used it on their body because they would have a reaction to whatever chemical was in there that wasn't tested by FDA. Sure. So that was a big one that we, we uh, another one that we did was when they changed the laws for all those E-pens, especially in Pennsylvania and I think Virginia, where they, you weren't allowed to have any kind of flavored, nicotine uh, sold um, because of the children, you know, they figured that was a gateway for the kids. So right. here these companies had all the, all this inventory of these flavored nicotine pens and cartridges that they had, they had to re destroy. It was a total loss. Wow. So we hauled loads and loads and loads of that to the furnace to, to burn. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. Yeah. That's but, you know, an interesting thing. Uh, again, you know, like you said, held to a higher standard, you know, mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to do something stupid when you're being followed by the ATF or the FDA or both. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they're, they're watching you with a fine tooth comb. Right. Uh, here's, I'm going to go off on my tangent now. Go, go for it. Now here, here's the thing. He's talking about one truckload. Okay. Uh -huh. we're, we're, where are you at geographically, Ohio or out West of there? Yes. You're in Ohio. No, Ohio. Yeah. Yes. Everybody knows everything from New York and Jersey goes to Ohio that gets burned. Right. Pennsylvania yep. is just, yep. Pennsylvania is just the throughway. Okay. Yeah. So that's one yep. truck going out to Ohio. Now you had that deal out in Palestine, Ohio there. We're talking yeah. rail cars and rail cars. You imagine how much shit that was on those rail cars. If you had to put it into a truck, how many trucks would be going across 80 to go to the incinerator plant to burn this stuff? Right. You know, Man. it's, it's unbelievable. I, 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 a lot. Yes. A lot. 
And believe me, I know some of them chemicals that got got spilled that day. And I feel very, very sorry for mm-hmm. those people that live in that area because they're never it's never gonna recover. Right. It'll be a hundred years before that. It's place gonna be is like up again. there in New York. Oh, what the heck was that? Love Canal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Back in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost like Chernobyl almost. Yeah. yeah. Sort yeah. Of. Although I'm sure uh, yeah, twenty five years they can sort of McDonald's but, back up. <laughs> It's, I'm telling you that there's, they're going to have cl- cancer clusters there like nobody's yeah, business. Yeah. And, and I hate to say that, but, but I, you know, I learned a lot about chemicals working for that company. You had to know your stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> some of the chemicals we, you know, some of the chemicals we hauled, we had to actually have pre-planned routes yep. with, uh, with the sheriff's office. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's how dangerous they were. And we yeah. couldn't go through certain areas. Right. Yep. That's but, crazy. Yeah. That oh yeah. Really I feel crazy. sorry for them people. Yes. Really, really yes. do. I totally agree with you on that. Hey, I had one, I had, you know, as, as we kind of, you know, wind things down here, I, I, I had this, this one spot on your, uh, on your email that you had seen, uh, a hair covered bipedal. Can you tell us about that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I wasn't in a truck when I see, uh, not, not okay. a work truck. I was in a pickup truck with my dad, but yeah. Um, my dad and I were, um, Coming back from uh, West Virginia, my uh, family's from West Virginia, and we were down there at my grandmother's place. Uh, we were doing some squirrel hunting. Mm-hmm. It was in October, and uh, I think it was 91 or 92. But anyways, <clears throat> we were, um, uh, my, my wife at the time was pregnant with my youngest child, so I wanted to get back uh, earlier. I wanted to leave Saturday night instead of Sunday morning, so I talked my dad into leaving real late Saturday night after we got out of the woods. So we're driving and of all places, and this is what really freaked me out about it. I've hunted some pretty rugged country in my lifetime. I I, I used to be a hunting fanatic. I hunted two states every year for 20 some odd years uh, without fail. Wow. I would take two weeks off every deer season, two weeks without fail, no matter what, Mm -hmm. um, no matter what that was my religion. But, um, so I've, I've never seen anything in the woods that I couldn't, uh, up until this time that I couldn't, you know, explain, but we're driving down the road. It's one in the morning, one thirty in the morning. And of all places, we're going down route 21. I don't know if maybe some of your listeners knows what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what you would consider rugged country. I mean, there are some farms and stuff out there, but there's, there's a, a little river, a little Creek that runs parallel to that, uh, for a long ways. I can't think of the name of the, the creek the body of water but uh actually people could people can do it and stuff but we we come we come around this bend this turn there's nobody else on the road you know it's 1 30 in the morning uh you know in october you know they roll up the side the sidewalks in these little towns right. up and down 21 so we, we come uh, in the, like this little bend in the road and my headlights hit something standing on the side of the road and I was doing probably a little over the speed limit, I'm sure, at this cruise set. And it was just maybe four or five seconds that I seen this thing. And as I went by it, I looked. But it, you know, in the dark, but it was illuminated for a good three, four seconds. And my dad and I both seen it. We were both, you know, well, of course, I was, I was driving. My dad was awake. Mm-hmm. And we passed it. And we got down the road, maybe two or three miles. And you could have heard a pen drop. And about the same time, we both looked at each other and we went, what was that? <laughs> what in the world was that? Right. And I'll tell you what I've seen. I've seen a bipedal creature. What caught my eye was how big it was. It wasn't so much that it was wide. It was tall. Mm-hmm. It wasn't real, real wide or thick. It was real tall. And it was kind of bent over, over top of a, what I assume was a roadkill or a freshly killed deer on the side of the road. And it had its hands down inside of this thing doing something. Uh, I could see that plain as day Mm -hmm. and I could see the steam coming up out of this deer. So it was freshly killed. However means it it had happened. Possibly could have been a smaller one, totally underground underneath the big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mind kind of went that way. Like I saw another one there, but I couldn't take my eyes off the one that was, you know, kind of bent over, but even bent over, it was higher than the, the, the front of the, of my dad's Ford 
truck. Wow. You know, uh, like if it bent over, the back was higher than the, the hood. Yeah. And because the actual, the ground kind of went down. It, it didn't go up, it went down. And it was like parallel to the hood of that truck as I went by. And I remember the eyes of this thing. I, I looked right through me. And for a few seconds, I was like paralyzed. I couldn't think. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't. I just didn't even know. My mind was, wasn't computing what I was seeing. Right. Because I never seen anything like this. I don't know what it was. And to this day, I don't call it a Sasquatch. I don't know what it was. It was a bipedal hairy creature. Sure. And it was huge. It was high. It was really tall. But that's what I saw. I'll tell you what my dad saw. Now, my dad, you'd have to know my dad. He is old school to a fault. Okay. He was born in West Virginia, you know, Navy man, uh, old school. Like I said, he, he, a Christian man, been going to church for years and years and years. Um, you know, he's got that good old time religion. I don't say that to to mock. I mean, he I really you. was a good Christian, is a good Christian man. Mm -hmm. He claimed that he saw a wild boar. Now, I want you to let that soak in for a couple seconds. Right. You know where we're at? We're on Route 21. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm probably only about 120 miles from Cleveland, Ohio, from downtown Cleveland. Okay. And my dad's seeing a wild boar that's the size of his pickup truck, basically. Right. I said, I said, Dad, um, it would take me more faith to believe that that was a Sasquatch than to think that that was a wild boar that big. It doesn't even make any sense whatsoever in any language or any place in the world that you would see a wild boar that huge. But that's what his mind saw. And to this day, yeah. that's what his mind saw. He will yeah. not say that it was a bipedal creature. Uh, he won't say it. He, yeah. he will not say it. It doesn't fit into his belief system. Yep. And his mind won't allow him. His mind just won't allow him to say what he saw. Sure. Because in his mind, he saw a wild boar. Yep. It, it has to. What are you going to do? You know, yeah. What are you going to do with that? You yeah. Know, it's like, yeah, he's got to rationalize it in his, his own mind and it's okay. Yep. I, I get that. You know, I, I don't. definitely you know, okay. Yeah. Yep. 100%. I know what I saw. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. That's and, interesting. And, and I'll tell you what, ever since that day, I never was really a big, Bigfoot guy. Like I said, I, uh -huh. I've been spending time in the woods by myself since I was, you know, 10 years old. You know, I'd walk up in the woods before dark or before daylight by myself, you know, nothing ever fazed me in the woods. There right. was nothing in the woods that I didn't think that I couldn't handle with my rifle, my hand or my shotgun. Sure. Uh, I, but ever since that day, I was, I, it totally changed my life. It really did. I, mm -hmm. I, I totally became a, a, a Bigfoot fanatic. I mean, my girlfriend will tell you, you want to know anything about Sasquatch or any kind of history or anything like that? Ask me. I'm an encyclopedia about it now Yeah. because I'm, I search for answers. Sure. And I wanted to know how, why, how, where, how, how did this happen? Right. Where it happened. I could almost even understand it if I saw it in some of the places that I've hunted, like in Pocahontas County, West Virginia, where you could get up in the mountains and, and really get lost, lost. And it's hard to get lost sometimes on the East Coast in today's world. Right. Because most places are, are developed or you're at least going to run by a road sometime. Exactly. But, you're you're know, going to come almost, across civilization you know, somewhere. Yeah. 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 But not where I saw it. That just didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Sure. But again, I, I didn't pick my sighting, but that's, that's definitely my sighting. Yeah. No, it's, it's really interesting. I'm glad you shared it. Cause that's really interesting. You know, yeah. I, 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 I don't share that with things. too many people, but yeah. yeah, I'm glad I did. Yeah, me too. I really am glad. I, I really appreciate you sharing that. You know, was there anything yeah. else you wanted to talk about before we, uh, we wrap these things? Man, wrap I think, up? I think that just about does it. I'm sure okay. there's, I probably got a hundred more stories in me, but yeah, maybe I can come on again. Yeah, but, definitely, um, dude. We'd, we'd love to have you back you know, on. I've had know? a great time. I'm really glad you guys had me on. Oh my word. We, we, we enjoyed this. This was a great conversation. I, I really enjoyed your stories and you, you're, you, you're a really, really good storyteller. You know what I mean? Like when I say that, I mean, uh -huh. like you, you, you present yourself, you, you, you have, information and you know, you're you're it's, you're just laying it out there and you can actually picture this in your head what's going on and i appreciate well, thanks. that i appreciate that i really do it was a, this was a lot of fun it, this was a good uh a really good conversation and uh just awesome. hang on hang on with us and uh, we'll just close this out and uh so we enjoyed ourselves on the show scott enjoyed himself we hope you enjoyed yourself too listening to this and ship 
if they enjoyed themselves and they liked the show, what can they do? They can pat themselves on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break your arm doing it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, they can share the show, share with everybody, their friends, colleagues, drivers, anybody, parents at the PTA meeting. There you know, you go. Because we're politically <laughs> correct here. Because oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you're a people person. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but just get the word out, you know. Yeah. We like to hear your stories, and this is what we do. We hear the stories, put them out on the the uh, waves here, and we get we hopefully we collect a little fan base as we're trying to get our little niche yeah, here. Exactly. So, and and the, and the more people you share the show with, the more people get to hear the show, and hopefully that inspires other people to to email us and come on the show and right. have a conversation. That that's always the goal is is to to shine the light on the uh, on the drivers in the industry you know even you know. if they find the show accidentally doesn't yeah, matter just find fantastic. it just find listen. the show yeah <laughs> i mean i was just talking to a guy the other day he, you know he said he kind of you know found it in an accidental way kind of stumbled across it. it's like that's really cool mm -hmm. i appreciate that we really do right so all that being said ship you want to sign us out yes keep the hammer down in the hammer lane thanks for listening yep, have a good night next time take care bye-bye